All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below in the description so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO Gym. And the QBO Gym is a place where we have numerous hands-on exercises that simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Every single month we come out with new exercises for you to practice and complete and we break it down for you into four different sections. Today we're working in the February year one warm-ups section. At the top here is an animated video to give you a synopsis of what's going on in Craig's world that month. He is our fictitious business owner. Further down is an interactive pre-assessment quiz. Below that are all of the exercises within this section. And then at the bottom here is an optional area where after you have completed all of the exercises in this section, we have some sample posts that you can use on your LinkedIn to share with everybody what you have learned so far. So let's dive right into today's exercise where we're going to practice processing Craig's bank feeds for the month. Go ahead and click on that link to have the exercise pulled up for you. I have it over here on the right hand side. So let's see what the scenario is for today. After you have input all the sales and expense transactions, it's time to process bank feeds. This means comparing what went into and out of the bank and making sure there is a correct record of it in QBO. You will need to be in the sample company to do this exercise, and you need to be in the same session of the sample company as you've been using for this entire section. If you have not completed those exercises yet, go ahead and click on the link on the top right corner of your screen. That'll take you to the first exercise. Complete that one and all the ones after it until you get back to this one. So let's get started with the exercise. From the left navigation bar, we need to hover over transactions and then select bank transactions. So here is the sample company. This is the last page that I left off of from the previous exercise. From the left navigation bar, we're hovering over transactions right here, and then we are going to select bank transactions. Um, you could have also selected bank transactions right here. This is a bookmark. However, if when you're working in your client's books, you don't see this as a bookmark, that is the pathway you would go. Hover over transactions and click on bank transactions. Now, if this is your first time in this area, you may have gotten this little pop-up. It's just a little overview of this area from QBO. You can go ahead and click out of it. Now, in a real life scenario, you would want to double check to make sure that what QBO thinks is a match is actually matched correctly to QBO transactions. Since you are the one that entered the transactions in the first place, you can usually do this fairly easily with a quick glance. For this exercise, we are going to assume that all of the matches are correct. Let's take a look at what those uh, suggested matches are from QBO though. In the all transactions field, we're going to click on the down arrow and then click on suggested matches. So that is right here. You can see it says all transactions, just click on it and then select suggested matches. And then you will see all of the transactions here in the checking, we're in the checking area, checking bank feed. Um, you can see all the potential matches right here. Now there are a couple of transactions that have multiple matches. So let's go ahead and address those first. We're gonna click anywhere on the PAM sites line. So if I scroll down a little bit, you see some here say one match found, and then there's others like this one that say two matches found. This is the one for PAM sites. So just go ahead and click anywhere on that line to expand it. Now you'll note that the transaction date here is possibly different than when you, uh, what you are seeing on your screen, um, depending on when you are doing this activity or this exercise. And that is because the sample company is always adjusting their dates. There's never like set dates that they use all the way through. Um, so again, your date, depending on when you are doing this activity or exercise is gonna possibly be different than what I have here. So when attempting to match, QBO is only searching by amount, as you can see here, 75 and 75, and the transaction says for 75. 
But when you look at the options that are here, you can see that the bank description matches the expense recorded for PAM sites. Here is that bank detail right there. It says PAM sites. And you can see this expense was also for PAM sites. So we know that this is the correct match. And so all we want to do now is click on the green add button. Go ahead and do that. And now that transaction has been matched. Now we see that there is another one. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see there is another one here for squeaky clean car wash. There are two matches found. So go ahead and click anywhere on that line to expand it here. Now you'll notice that there are two transactions, but with different types and different transaction dates. So they are both for squeaky clean car wash. They are both for the exact same amount, but you can see the dates are different and the type of transaction is also different. So you will want to select the one that matches the date of the bank feed, which should be the one that's already selected here. Um, I need to scroll back up so that I can expand my date field a little bit. And it's showing that the transaction here is showing for January 9th, and that would match this one for January 9th. Again, remember that your dates may be completely different than what you are seeing on my screen. Just make sure that whatever date is here is matching the one that is selected um, on this screen. So this one is already selected, so we are good to go. All I need to do now is click on the green add button, and now that transaction has been matched as well. Now, as a note here, you would want to, in a real life scenario, make sure that you investigate what that other transaction is for at a later date. So now we only have single matches left on the list, so we can accept the matches in batch. You can tell because if you scroll all the way through, you can see one match found for each transaction is what it is showing. So in order to batch add them all, we wanna click on the checkbox at the top to uh, select all remaining transactions. That is this box right here next to date. Go ahead and click on that to select all of the transactions here. And then we wanna click on accept right there. When you do, you will see that 18 transactions have been matched and it's showing that there are no other transactions that can be found because there are no other ones that have suggested matches for them. So we need to clear out the filter here by clicking on the X next to suggested matches because as you can see here by the orange uh, number right here and right here, it says that there are five transactions that still need to be reviewed, which are the five that we see right here. Now the transactions from Books by Bessie and A Rental require some investigation, so you will leave them for now and ask Craig about them. However, the Hicks hardware transaction is a problem. You could swear that you just entered it, you, that you entered that already, so why isn't it matching? Let's take a closer look. So before we do, here are the four that we were talking about, that Books by Bessie and the A Rental, ones that you would go back and talk to Craig about. Here is the one for Hicks Hardware that we are seeing. Now, if you have not entered the Hicks Hardware expense from the previous exercise, um, in the same session of the sample company, you need to go back and do that right now. Um, I'm gonna put the link right there on the top uh, corner of the screen so that you can go ahead and do that exercise, enter in that expense for Hicks Hardware so that you can finish completing the rest of the steps in this exercise. But if you did all the exercises uh, before and you're still in that same session of the sample company, you can continue proceeding the way we are doing this exercise here. So we're going to click anywhere on the Hicks hardware line so that we can expand it. Go ahead and do that. And now we want to click on the button that's next to find match because what this is going to do is it's going to look for any kind of match potentially that it could be um, and has all of them listed through here. So this resulting list, there is one transaction that has a similar amount but is off by two cents going to scroll down a little bit, you can see the one for Hicks hardware right here, it is showing for 2436, not 2438. You also notice that you entered the transaction today, but the date range QBO is looking for doesn't include transactions from today. So at this point, you have two choices. Maybe the amount of the previous transaction was keyed in incorrectly and you need to fix it. Or maybe you need to expand the date range to include today. 
So how do you know which one is correct? Let's take a look at this and another, um, let's take a, another look at the transaction in the bank feed. Let's close out of this window by clicking on the X here on the top right corner. Now we'll notice that the date on the bank fee transaction is much older and the date and the same as the date of the transaction that was um, with the incorrect amount. So as you can see, that date is much, much older um, and the same as the date of the transaction with the incorrect amount, um, which I can't go back to the screen, but um, that, that was the other one. So it is highly likely that that is the correct transaction and that you or someone else just made a mistake when entering it. So you will need to change it, but remember the bank transaction is is always correct and cannot be changed. So if there is a discrepancy, you'll always have to change it in QBO. So first we need to locate the incorrect transaction. So from the left navigation bar, we're going to hover over expenses and then select vendors. Here is expenses right here. Hover over that and then go ahead and select vendors. Now we want to find Hicks Hardware and click on them. So scroll down until you find Hicks Hardware. Once you see their name, go ahead and click on it. Now at the top of the list is the expense that we entered today. Further down the list, you'll find the transaction that needs to be changed. Note that the transaction dates may be a little bit different than what you see on my screen because again, the sample company is always changing their dates. Um, so here is the one that we entered today. Here is that older one that you can see with the incorrect amount. So this is the one that we want to look at. Go ahead and click on that expense with that number with that amount right there. In the amount field, we need to change this to $24.38. So click into the amount box right there, delete that six and replace it with an eight. When you hit the tab key over, you will see that now it has been updated here. We are simply going to save and close this. So click on the green save and close button down on the bottom right corner of the screen and that expense has now been saved. So we're gonna go back to the bank feed. So to do that again, from the left navigation bar, hover over transactions and then select bank transactions. So here is that transactions right here, hover over that, select bank transactions. And now if we scroll to the Hicks hardware one, you can see now that this transaction is now matching. So we're going to click on match right here next to it. And now that transaction has been matched and you are all done with processing the bank feeds today. And if you have any questions or want to know more about the QBO gym, just click on the link below in the description. Be sure to leave this session of the sample company open as you will need it for the next exercise in our cardio section where we practice sending invoices. And I will see you in the next video.